Hello and welcome. Here we will create a simple console app that will be our web API client and it will handle books. So what we can expect is create a new book, read books, update that book and finally delete the book. Okay. As I said before, we will handle books. So for that, in our web API on the server, what's new? We will have a class for books with an integer that is the ID, a string for the name and a string for the author. Also, it will include a books controller where we have a route prefix of API slash books. This controller contains a list of books that is static. Also, it contains a get action that returns a list of books and receives an integer. This integer can be null. If we provide an integer, it will return a list with one book if it finds the book. If we not provide the integer, it will return all the books. Okay, it contains a post action for the add book, receives a book, a update and finally a delete action. If you don't remember how to create a console app, it's very simple. On Visual Studio, we go to the file menu, we choose new project, then a new window will open and we choose Visual C Sharp and consoleapp.net framework. Then add the name, the location for our project and the solution name. This is the most important part, the solution must be different from our web API, ok? Now that we have a console app, what's next? We have to add the code to act as a HTTP client, then specify the web API based address and the headers and finally make the calls post, get, update and delete. So let's do the code. This is our starting point. I already added this book definition is exactly the same thing as the web API. The only different thing is this. It has a override to to string. Okay, just that. Our main program just have a console read line. Okay, so let's do the first thing. We need something that act as a HTTP client. So let's do that. Um, the first thing, let's insert this here because we want to reuse that. So it will be a static HTTP client and we will call it client. It is a new HTTP client. We need to import system.net.http Next we will specify the base address so we go here and we say that the client.base address is equals to new URI and we provide HTTP two points slash slash local host and two points again my port is 57276 Yours can be different. The next step is the headers. We need headers for these. We will use application JSON and we need to create a media type, new media type with quality header value. We provide this application JSON. So this is a media type for application JSON. We need to import system.net.http.headers. We import that. And next we need to associate this media type with our client. So we say here client.default request headers dot accept dot clear to clear the previous defined headers, the default ones, and the same thing for add a new header. And our new header is the media type that we defined previously, this one with application JSON. Next we will define the area where we will make the calls for post, get, update and delete. Here, because it can give you errors, we need a try catch exception e we give to the end user console right line error e dot message and here we will make the calls for create read update and finally delete we need a book so 
I declare here a var book is equals to new book with ID 10. The title is the book and the author is someone. And we need a var message too is a string dot empty. So we are ready to make our calls. So we will reuse code and let me past some code here and I will explain step by step. If you don't understand you can always download the source code. I will provide the link in the description of this video. To create we have this message, the string, and we call this method add book. We provide the book that we just created and then we print to the end user the message that we received from the server. Let me create this. Create is control dot and generate method. The next part, the read part. First we read all the books. We read a list of books and we have here a list of books. We call the method get book without any parameter. Then we do a for on that list of books and print the book and the index. The next one is get the book with ID number one. Okay, it can be number two, for example. And we receive a list of books also because it's the same action method from Web API. Okay, then we print to the end user first or default because it's a list. So control dot and generate the method. It should be the same method. Let me go down and we say that this is a nullable and also its default value is null. Let's go up. The next one is the update part. We took the book that we already have and we changed the author from someone to Mr. Smith. Then we call the method update book with the ID number 10 and we provide object book that we have. Okay, and we receive a message from this method. Then we print the message and we get the book with the ID number 10. We are reusing the code and we print that book. So to create this one, control dot generate method. And the last one, the last one is the delete. We just call the method delete book with ID number 10. We get the message and we print the message. Then we try to get it from the web API, the book that we just deleted. Okay. Then to print, because we can receive a null from this get book, we have to do this check. And I have a text one and a text two. And let me show you here. So I have here the explanation of the operators. Here I get the first or default, it can be null. So I have the null conditional operator. This will test the value for the left and operand for null before performing member access. So if this is null, this method is not called. Okay? And this is the coalescing, the null coalescing operator. Okay? It returns the left and operand if it is not null, otherwise it will return the right and operand. So if this is null, it will return this. If this is not null, it will return this, the, the value of this, okay? And the text number two is the old way using a ternary operator, okay? If this is null, it will print this, if it is not, it will call the function and do a toString. So let's create the method, control dot and generate the method. Now let's do the code for the add book. Let's go here and let's focus here. First we need to define the action. Action is equals to API slash books slash add. Just this. Then we need to make a request. So var request is equals to client, the client that we, the HTTP client that we defined posts as JSON async and we provide the action and 
the book that we want to post to create this is giving us a error because we need to install something else okay if we tried the control dot will not give us any suggestion so we need to go here to the tools and we go to nugget package manager manage nugget package for solution it opens this window we have nothing installed yet so we go here to browse and we will search for ASP.NET web API enter and we will try to find here something like Microsoft ASP.NET dot web API dot client because this is a client app we hit here we install we say OK and we accept so the guy just finished to install these if we go here to the installed packages it installed the microsoft.aspnet.webapi.client and also the Newton soft JSON okay so if we go here back these is not giving us any error now okay this is the magic here so the next thing that we will do is we have a request now we want a, a response so var response is equals to request dot result dot content dot read as as string async just is and finally we just return the response dot result we can delete this because we don't need this so this is just this okay this is very simple here we are making a request we call the client that we created and we post as JSON because we have this book we give the action API slash book slash as and the book and finally we get the response from the request we say request dot result dot content dot read as string async and then because this is this will return a task of string we have to call dot result okay to get the result now let's focus on get book let me copy this because the code is very similar let me paste here on get book let me change the name of parameter to id the action will be api slash books slash get slash id and because this is a string interpolation we need dollar sign here okay the request will be client dot instead of post it will be a get a sync okay and we just provide the action the next step is the response here instead of read as a sync let me put this in the next line it will be read as a sync and we need to say that this is a list of book just like this okay and then we call response.result the next one is the update book let's go up and here in the update we just paste the code and we change let me change this to id instead of int v is int id and the action will be api slash books slash update and we provide the id like get the request will be a client dot put as json async and we provide the action and also the book okay the response the response will be request that result dot content as the previous one but now we will read as string async just that because we want to receive a string from the action methods that we call the delete is very similar to this one let me copy let me go up and let me hide this and paste here instead of v is id instead of api slash book slash update is delete and we provide here the id the request is client dot delete async okay and we just provide the action okay 
the response is the same thing because we will receive a string from the web API. So the next step is testing our client. We need to open another Visual Studio with our web API, the Hello World. We have here the books controller where we have a get, post, a put and a delete. The ones that I showed on the slides. You can download the code again. We can run this because for the client to call this, this needs to be running, right? And we go to the client and now we can call this. The first time will take some time. Now we have the result, okay? We have here create book added. Now we have four books, the list of books, Frankenstein, the Dracula, Moby Dick, the book, our book that we created with the author someone. Then we read the one with ID number two, the Dracula, and we update the book with ID number 10, this one that we created. Now we have the author of Mr. Smith and we delete the book like here. And we have the book is deleted because we tried to get the book with ID number 10 and we deleted the book with ID number 10, okay? To remember, the code to act as a HTTP client is just this. HTTP client, client is equals to new HTTP client. The code for web API base address is just accessing the property base address of our client and we give it a new URI with our address. Then to sp specify the headers we define the JSON media type okay and we clear the previous default headers and we give a new header that is our media type JSON. The next part is making the calls to make a post we define an action and we call post as JSON async we give the action and the book and then we get the response like this response.result.content.read as string async because we are getting a string from the server, the web API. Then we just have to call this and we get result. The get is just this, we have the ID here, we call get async and we give the action. The response is almost the same thing, but we have to call read as async and we say that we want to read a list of books because the web API returns a list of books. The update action is put as JSON async the delete action is delete as async, okay? And finally, don't forget that we need to install microsoft.aspnet.webapi.client And this is the end. As always, thank you for watching.